Yeah. All right. Appreciate it. Thanks. Okay. So then what happens is I just like cut the edit right there and we'll just like go into the other stuff, you know? And great. Yeah. So we're, we're out of, cool. we're into the Patreon zone here. Um, that was awesome. That was super, super cool. Um, do you guys have, um, so I just have a, a few more, um, questions. Um, what's your favorite cryptid outside of, uh, outside of Bigfoot? Do you guys have anything else that you're into? I, uh, I find the, uh, the dog man oh, encounters man, yeah. and stories really interesting because they're, they seem to be more of the, uh, the sinister kind of, uh, mm -hmm. the evil <laughs> Bigfoot, you know what I mean? It, it seems like a lot of those stories, uh, the Rougarou and things like that are very intriguing. I think that's the whole, the werewolf kind of shapeshifter, mm -hmm. uh, and the fact that, uh, Native American legends talk about them to it, it grabs my attention. Totally. Yeah, I'm a big uh, look. I, you know, speaking of southeastern uh, United States and Kentucky and, and West Virginia, there's a lot of uh, incredible creatures that come out of that area. I'm thinking particularly of the Mothman and yes, uh, the Hopkinsville Bryce. Goblin. But, <laughs> you know, mm. for a lot of people who don't know about the Mothman, there were hundreds and hundreds of witnesses. This took place in Point Pleasant, West Virginia mm -hmm. in, the, in the late 60s, around Christmas time, actually. And people started seeing this large hulking winged creature with these glowing red eyes. And, and not only were people seeing this creature, but they were seeing uh, unexplainable lights in the sky as well. So UFOs or UAPs, as we like to call yeah. them now. And, and people were having foretelling dreams of, of these Christmas presents floating in a river. Um, and and act, actually, as a matter of fact, you know, the... Uh, the, the silver bridge collapsed on, on, on Christmas Eve and, uh, right. you know, killing 60 plus people. And, and so a lot of people thought it was terrible. And uh, a lot of people thought this, this Mothman creature was sort of a, a harbinger of doom. And, uh, you know, after that, that bridge collapsed, people didn't, you know, see the creature anymore. Uh, it has been popping up in the Midwest as of recent. It, uh, it has been, yes. Chicago. Chicago, Chicago Mothman, yeah. Yep. Yeah, yep. and so the phenomenon is resurfacing. And so, you know, I find the, the whole Mothman thing very intriguing, very interesting. Mm. A lot of credible witnesses to it. And so yes. there, there's meat on the bone with that one. Oh, I agree 100%. I've actually done uh, multiple interviews with uh, leading researchers in Chicago Mothman this month. And man, like... Mm. It's getting wild in the Midwest, dude. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. It's pretty crazy. But uh, yeah, uh, Russell, uh, what would you say? Yeah, uh, Bryce stole my thunder there. I know. I saw you. <laughs> oh, Bryce, you got me. Again. There's lots of cryptids, uh, Russell. Just oh, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> Realistically, that's about the only one I've ever really locked in on was the Mothman. I had a, okay. um, it's cool. just a little background. When I was a little kid, um, I grew up in West Virginia, and um, there was something that to this day it still kind of haunts me especially later years when i find out what the mothman was but i this is really? preschool but i remember seeing a bird fly overhead that literally i i saw the shadow coming and i thought what's Ooh. And, it, and it went between me and the sun and it was a huge shadow and it was a silent bird and i even at that age when it came up over the the treetops yeah. it was enormous but wow. with the sun behind it, I couldn't get any detail. All I just saw was this humongous span of wings right mm -hmm. over top of the treetops. And I mean, for a little kid, maybe that was an exaggerated thing. But as an adult, thinking back on it, that still bothers me. And, oh, man. Yeah, and then I, when I heard about the Mothman, I'm wondering if there's any kind of parallel between the two. But it was just absolutely creepy. So mm -hmm. that's as far as cryptids, that's about the only one that I actually give any, well, I, I mean, that's the only one that I really follow. I okay. Yeah. I mean, that's a, that's a really cool uh, story to share. Thank you. I mean, like there's been, uh, there's that story out of Illinois in the seventies where it's like the Thunderbird almost made off with um, that kid that was around 10 right. years old, I think. Uh, so man, that story could have had a different ending. I'm you know, glad it didn't swoop in. Yeah. On no you, man, but... yeah that's wild. I didn't know that Russ. That's cool, man. Uh, Maria, do you have any, uh, 
I'm a, I, I would say I'm a one cryptid at a time type of girl. That's all right. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> all right, right now. I'm this guy. Oh yeah, Archie McPhee. Yeah. Oh, um, love it. But, and 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 I've got six kids, so. Yeah, she's got um, her yeah, hands. Yeah, she's got I her got hands my full. hands full. So. Yep. I, That's once cool. once we once we put the uh, the legend of Bigfoot to rest and it becomes the the reality, then I'll, then I'll keep moving on. I'm the, Move I'm on the next. to the next one. Yeah, very mm. cool. Very cool. Next season. <laughs> next season. <laughs> um, what would be uh, if you were if you could make your uh, uh, Bigfoot uh, dream expedition team of uh, could be anyone over the years. Uh, who would be? Who would you uh, enlist on your team? Uh, these guys. This is it. I wouldn't. Enough. I wouldn't trade these guys for anyone. Awesome. I, literally. I mean, I I know some really good researchers. Okay. Um, Derek Randall's love him to death. He's a. He's oh yeah, a Olympic Project. Yeah. Lyle yep. Blackburn. Maybe, um, maybe Shane Brad, Carson. Brad Pitt, just for fun. <laughs> <laughs> But as far as reliability, you know, we've built a, what I would call a family here, and I would yeah. I wouldn't trade these for anyone. I love it. Um, we understand each other. We it's like that Fred and Ginger dance where we actually maneuver yeah. each other very, very And and nice. that's the thing when when Ronnie came on board last year after RPG had to leave. Oh, yeah. I mean, I was honestly really worried. I mean, who's like yeah. who's going to be the new person? What are they going to be like? Mm. Because mm -hmm. you know. In the field, it's hard enough. You have a lot of uh, grueling days with, uh, with you know, bad climate, uh, difficult yeah. terrain, uh, just all sorts of things, and just the discomfort, right? Um, and then, if on top of it, you get someone out there who just, you know, you don't like, you don't see eye to eye with, whatever, it them, becomes yeah. even more miserable. And time is intensified in the field, you know, kind of like yeah. the days are longer. It's really an intense experience. Um, and I, you know, I have to say, I really noticed uh, this second expedition, how we all just really came together uh, mm. as, as, a, as a family, really. I mean, we had it in the first season, but it really, really came to life um, this, this next season. And that really helps when you're out there um, because you're anticipating each other's moves. Uh, there's trust. There's communication. I mean, all of these things that really make for a successful uh, expedition. And then there's just that. different perspectives. You know, each yeah. one of us carry such right. different backgrounds and outlooks mm -hmm. and all of those different skill sets, all of that comes together. And so, yeah, there's no one I'd, I'd uh, trade in. No way. That's awesome. That's awesome. Very cool. Uh, any, oh, any that other wasn't thoughts? disappointing because yeah. we don't have any superheroes to pull out of the field. I, these guys are, <laughs> really, I mean, we we actually, and that what you said, Dr. Maria, that was a very good point is trust. Mm -hmm. you, I absolutely would trust my life in the hands of the team because I know that there's no uh, agenda. We're all going towards that same point. Yep. Um, and that's trust. That's huge. Yeah, yeah. There, there is a unified focus. Everyone's kind of thinking the same. We're just different parts of the same brain in a way. We're seeing exactly. things through our own perspectives, and then you that together. It, it's pretty neat because we're picking up on on a lot. Yeah. Last last question before I I let you all go to your separate corners of the U.S. Uh, what what do you think has been the most uh, convincing piece of historical Bigfoot evidence over the years? What do you think of first? Well, for uh, me, yeah, yeah, go ahead. I'll, I'll start. I mean, it, it's it's right in the moniker of its name, it, it, Bigfoot, and it and it's these mm -hmm. incredible trackways that exist all over the all over the world, really. Yes, and uh, it, it's it's scientists like uh, you know Dr. Jeffrey Meldrum, who's made it his life's work exactly. uh, to explore the. Uh, anatomy of some of these trackways and he's an expert in the field of, of of bipedalism and and stuff like that and what he finds in some of these tracks are you know these these spontaneous uh movements of the foot and stuff that just make it near impossible for someone to put on a wood stomper is what they yeah. call them <laughs> and and fake right. these tracks some of these tracks yeah. run you know over two to four miles long yeah and um 
the amount of evidence that one can pull from from a trackway in particular is just it's incredible and it's a way to really sort of see uh you know what you're after and and it's it's incredible so you know i do love the videos and i do mm -hmm. love the photos but uh but there's something really special about the great trackways that that bigfoot that's leaves cool behind that is cool uh I would I would second that in the, in the sense of the amount of um, casts that have been mm -hmm. um, captured, and that's really what got me on this journey even more is uh, going back with a married couple that had discovered these tracks, and we casted one of those, and to hold that in your hands and you see the toes, you see dermal ridges, you see yes. evidence of the metarsal bridge, you know the ridge it's really something incredible because you're holding it in your hands and it seems a lot more real. Yeah. Videos yep. are great. Like Bryce yep. said, but I think there's so many of these that there's that physical evidence that something made this impression in the earth. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, Russell, any thoughts? Um, my it, when, uh, first snapshot would be the Patterson Gimlin film because yep. it's been debated left and right and 100%. beaten up and put to rest and back and forth. Um, that would be my first snapshot. But second, like the guys are saying, um, when you actually hold a cast in your hand, mm -hmm. you can see something on TV at, or an impression. You really have no idea of the size. But yeah. when you put it in your hands and your, your hands are this far apart and you're holding both sides of it and you realize, holy crap, this was a giant creature that made this footprint in the ground and you start seeing the the separation of toes and and where the ball of the foot pressed off and pushed mm. it's um that's pretty amazing yeah because it you it, and it like what bryce was saying in miles of trackways it would take an awful long time to make every single one of those footprints different and unique and pressure points and that sort oh, of yeah. Thing. oh yeah so, oh yeah yeah oh yeah not without a whole lot of footprints and stomping around both sides of it to make them all unique and different. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm, I, agree. I, I have to agree with those guys. Dr. Mayer, any thoughts? Uh, best evidence up that I've seen up until this point, uh, you'll see it on season two. Oof. That's good. good. That's a good one. That's all right. Nice tease. I'll allow it. <laughs> no, I want to well, watch it. <laughs> I think uh, I think that's that's an awesome uh, extra extra bit there. I'm going to actually stop recording at this time. Thank you all.